Hello everyone, Zaid from Zed Security here. In today's video, I'm happy to introduce you to Maytham. Maytham has been working with us and learning from me for years, and he wanted to contribute to the community and show you how to manually create a fake access point without relying on tools and without using these programs such as Fluxion and so on. Creating a fake access point can be useful in so many scenarios. It's usually used to lure people to connect to this fake Wi-Fi in order to get internet access and then monitor them and spy on them and steal the passwords and credentials they enter. It can also be used to launch an evil twin attack to steal Wi-Fi passwords without the need to use a dictionary, even if WPA or WPA2 is used. So smash the like button to show us support and to tell Nathan that you're enjoying his content. As I usually say, the more likes, the more content that we'll make. Also, don't forget to fill the form in the description for a chance to win free access to one of my courses. We announce winners every second Wednesday on our social media channels. So follow us there to stay updated and let's go. Hello everyone, it's Maytham from Z Security, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use an evil twin attack to capture the network key. Here we have the attacker machine with the wireless adapter, and here we have the victim machine that is connected to the router, which is connected to the internet. Now first we will start the fake access point with the same Wi-Fi name as the target. Then we will keep deauthenticating a client from the network, so our fake access point will be open so when the victim connects to it a web page will appear saying there is a software update and they have to put the password in to update it after they enter the password and hit submit the password will be stored in our database management system which is MySQL you will see how to set that up later in this video now you can fully customize the page that you want the victim to see for this video, I'm going to be using a ready template that I have customized a bit. Now there is a lot of templates online that you can download. I will include this template that I am working with here in the description of this video. Now this is what the victim will see. A firmware upgrade is asking for a password and it looks very legit to a person that doesn't know about security much. So they will agree, enter the password, confirm it and then hit start upgrade now there are multiple ways to execute this attack one way is by using Flexion, which is a tool that can be used to execute the evil twin attack and it will do all the hard work for us but in cybersecurity, it's always good to know how to launch an attack manually instead of relying on a specific tool to do that for you so in the future if you had a certain scenario or if you were just in a certain position where you had to kind of customize your attack then you will know how to do that yourself without being limited to these tools so in this video we will see how to do all of that manually now here we have the attacker machine which is Kali Linux and this is the OS X machine that will act as a victim machine and as you can see here we are connected to the network Netgear 47 and we have internet access so if you go to Google news you'll see we have internet access let's go back to the attacker machine and in here I have the commands needed for this attack I will include this file in the description of this video all you have to do is download it and then copy and paste the commands as what I will be doing I'm just going to move this a bit I'm gonna start Terminator make it a bit bigger now first let's start with updating Kali Linux to the latest version by doing apt-get update so I have the command in here I'm just gonna copy it and paste it now a quick way to paste the commands to the terminal is by pressing Control, shift and the letter V at the same time I'm gonna press enter now Kali has been updated let's install the required packages for this attack by doing apt-get install host apd dns mask and apache so I'm just gonna copy this 
paste it the same way. Now host APD or host access point daemon is a software access point that allows us to use the wireless adapter to broadcast several access points at the same time. So we will use host APD to broadcast our fake access point. DNS mask in here will work as a DHCP server that gives IP addresses to clients. It will also work as a DNS server that handles DNS requests. Now DNS mask is great because we will use it to redirect the victim to our fake web page. Apache 2 on the other hand is the web server that we will be using to host our web page. I'm gonna press enter. After the installation has been finished, we will need to put our wireless card in monitor mode. First, let's just do iwconfig to check if my adapter is connected. So I'm just gonna do iwconfig. And you will see here my wireless card is called LAN0 and it's in managed mode. Now I'm going to use airmon-ng to put it in monitor mode. It's up to you how do you want to put your card in monitor mode. So I have the command in here. I'm just gonna copy it and paste it enter let's do iwconfig one more time just to confirm and as you can see my card now is called lan0 moan and it's in monitor mode next just to make things organized we will make a new directory in root and call it fap short for fake access point so let's just copy the commands in here this will make our directory, call it FAP. Then we will navigate to it by using CD. Once we are here, we will now set up a new host APD configuration file and write the instructions inside it. So I'm going to do nano hostapd.conf, which is this command. I'm gonna press enter. Here, nano is just the text editor and we are telling it to create a file called host apd with a dot configuration extension now in here we will put the instructions and we have the instructions in here i'm just gonna copy them and paste them so for interface i'm gonna put my wireless adapter which is in monitor mode which is called lan0 mon for the Wi-Fi name, put the name of the target Wi-Fi. In my case, it's called Netgear 47 because that's the name of the target network that I'm going to attack. After modifying these two instructions, do Control X. I'm gonna say yes, save it, and I'm gonna hit Enter to exit. Next, we will create a configuration file for DNS mask and put the instructions inside it just like what we did previously with host apd again to create the file we will do nano dnsmask.conf which is this command i'm gonna copy it paste it in here hit enter now in here let's just copy all of this again paste it now in here all you have to modify is the interface name once again, I'm gonna put my wireless adapter, which is LAN0 mon, and I'm going to leave the rest alone. So that's it for the NS mask. I'm gonna do Control X, press Y, hit Enter. That's it. Now we need to assign our wireless adapter, a network gateway, and a net mask, and then add the routing table. I have the commands in here as well. As you can see, routing table and gateway. I'm gonna copy them and paste them in here. Now to provide internet access after the victim enters the password, we need to forward the traffic from ETS0, which is the virtual wireless adapter that is connected to the internet from our main machine, to LAN0 MON, which is our wireless adapter. If you do not want the users to have internet access, you can just skip this step. For me, I want the victim to have internet access, so I'm just gonna copy all of these, and I'm gonna paste them. Press enter for the last command, and that's it. 
Now it's time to set up our database to store the passwords entered by the victim. We are going to use MySQL. Now MySQL is a relational database management system that can be used for a wide range of purposes. In our case, we will be using it as a web database. So the commands for MySQL are here. We're gonna first start the service by doing service MySQL start. I'm gonna copy it, paste it in here. Now the service has been started. Then let's just start the program by doing MySQL. So I'm gonna do MySQL press enter and now we are inside this command will create a new database and call it FAP then this command will assign the database a username so the user can write into it then this command will grant privileges to that user and assign it a password then we're gonna use the database then we will create a data table to store the passwords entered by the victim and this command will change the encoding to UTF-8 so we can read the characters entered by the victim this command will only show the passwords stored inside this table now all we have to do is just copy and paste the commands into the terminal one by one so I'm gonna copy this paste it in here and when you see query OK, that means the command has been a success. Next command is going to create a user. I'm gonna copy it, paste it again, and do the same for the rest of the commands. Now again, this command will show the passwords for now. Our table is empty, so it's gonna show empty set in here. And that's it for MySQL. Now let's set up our captive portal. So I have the file downloaded here as a zip file in the downloads directory. I will include the download link in the description for this file. Now we need to unzip this file because it's a .zip extension. And we will want to put all the files in the var www.html folder because that's where our Apache server is running on. Again, we will use the Apache server to host our captive portal. Now let's go back here. Now we will need to remove all the files that is already stored in var www.html. To do that, I'm just gonna do this command. I'm gonna split the terminal in here and I'm gonna paste the command in this terminal. Now the files has been deleted. Next we need to move the template or the captive portal, which is the zip file, from the downloads to the var www.html and unzip it over there. So I'm gonna move it using this command. Then I'm going to navigate where I have moved my file. Then I'm going to unzip it. And as you can see, all of these files are now extracted. If I do ls, we will see all the files in here. Now the last thing here we will need to do is to start the Apache server by doing service apache2 start. And here's the command. I'm just going to copy it again, paste it. And now the Apache server has been started. And that's it. Now we are ready to start our attack. Let's just split the terminal into four. I'm just going to enlarge in this. I'm gonna split the terminals. I'm going to clear this. First, let's just navigate back to the FAP directory that we just created, which is stored in root FAP. Now let's start our host APD. If we scroll down this document, we will see the host apd command. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna run it in here. Then I'm going to run DNS mask. Again, copy and paste the command in here. And one last thing we need to do is just to redirect the traffic 
to our own IP address. To do that, we are going to do DNS spoof and I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Now it's time to de-authenticate the user. For me, I'm just going to skip this step because it's already been done multiple times before and I just don't want to make the video any longer than this. So let's go back to the victim machine. And if we go to the Wi-Fi, you will see that we have a Netgear 47 here. It's open. I'm gonna press on it. And as you can see, we have a firmware upgrade in here. I'm gonna agree, type the password, start the upgrade. Let's go back in here. I'm gonna hit cancel. Let's go back to our database. I'm gonna hit the up arrow to use the previous command, which is the command that shows the password stored. I'm gonna hit enter. And as you can see, we have captured the password in here. Now for this example, I added the six in here. They usually should have the same exact identical password, just to confirm. Now that's it for this video. The evil twin attack is very powerful, but it might not be the most efficient for you because it will require the victim to enter the password themselves on a web page. With that being said, you would be surprised about the number of people that fall for these kinds of attacks. Let me know what you think in the comments about this attack. Also, don't forget to like this video if you have enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with the latest in cybersecurity.